Hi, welcome to Glow's Kinder Kitchen and I'm Glow. Well, today I'm going to be making a pork roast with you guys. And one of the reasons I decided on pork roast was are the one of the grocery stores that I shop at had pork butts or Boston butt, um, you know, or else it's also known as the shoulder roast of um, pork on sale for 99 cents a pound. So I got myself a six and a half pound roast and I had them cut it in half. So I got two meals out of it and it was under $7, actually about um, $3.25 for this portion of the roast. And this uh, roast right here is about three and a quarter pounds. So um, I decided to do this recipe with you guys today. It's very easy. And this is one of the recipes that I quite often make if I have someone come over for dinner. It's um, super easy and everybody seems to like it. And I've yet to have someone that did not ask for the recipe after they've had it. It's that delicious. So um, what I'm doing now is I'm preheating my cast iron pot here. I'm going to be cooking this in my oven at 300 degrees. So it'll take about two, two and a half hours because um, this particular cut of meat, I find it's much better if you cook it low and slow. So while this is uh, still heating up, I'm going to go ahead and lightly salt and pepper this roast. And what we're going to do is we're going to brown it in here before we put it in the oven. So I'm just going to go ahead and lightly salt and pepper the whole roast. on all sides because when we brown this we're going to be doing the same thing and also since I'm going to be touching these as I'm turning my roast and everything I will always wash my salt and pepper shakers afterwards because you don't want to contaminate stuff when you're using raw meat. I'll just turn my pot down. I can feel the heat coming off of it, which is good, but at the same time, you don't want it too hot. And I'm going to be browning this in my pot with light virgin olive oil. You don't want to use the um, first pressing of olive oil in this at all, the extra virgin. You just want the lighter version of it. It's strictly for sauteing and stuff. And if you notice, I'm sprinkling it kind of high off of the roast, and the reason I do that is so that it gets all over everything. So let me wash my hands, and then we'll get to the next step. I have, I have a sink here of warm, sudsy water, and I always do that um, when I'm cooking because I can use that to put my dishes in that are dirty, you know, after I rinse them if they're really dirty, and also to wash my hands. And I just find it's much easier to do that. So anyway, my next thing is I'm, I'm going to put some olive oil in here. And this is what I'm talking about. It's the one strictly for sautéing and stuff. It has a higher burn temperature than the regular olive oil. And there's probably a tablespoon and a half in there, and it's already starting to sizzle, so we know it's going to be nice and hot. So I'm going to go ahead and put that down in here. Hot as well. yep, and you put it down in slow. So that's what you want. And you want this to brown real good. You don't want to pull it off. If I wanted to pull this off right now, it would stick. When it's ready to turn, when you lift up a little bit on it, it's going to lift right off the pot. So I'm going to be back in a couple minutes just before we turn this so that you can see what it looks like. Well, I think we're about ready to turn it. And I don't know, Richard, if you can look, get down in here, but you can see how the oil around the sides is starting to brown a little. And it appears to me by listening to this that this is ready to turn. It's been about three minutes. Yeah, and see how easily that picks up off of there? Very easily, Miss Well. So let's look and see what it looks like on that side. Oh, yeah. It's brown. And the reason we're doing this is to sear the roast shut so that the juices stay in it while it's cooking in the oven low and slow. And it's going to give it a lot more flavor by browning it first. 
So we're going to let this go ahead and continue to brown. And I'll be back with you for the last side so you can see what it looks like. Hi. Well, welcome back. I've gone ahead and I've seared all sides of this roast. And I put the fat side up. And the reason I did that is so that as this, this roast is cooking in the oven, that uh, it's going to help go through the roast more. And it's, this roast is going to be delicious. So I seared this on number six on my stove, which is medium. I'm going to just turn it down a little as we're starting to add these other ingredients. And I also have my oven preheating to 330 degrees. So the next thing we're going to put in here is a can of cream of mushroom soup. And I'm going to go, and I just put it on top. Super, super easy. And it's fine that it falls down into this, but it's going to be delicious. No right. good. There's some of it already hit. I'm just going to turn that off. So the next thing we're going to do is put some thyme in it. Let me open it on the other side. And I do about a teaspoon. And I always try to rub it in my hand to help it start to bloom. You just put it right on top of the soup. You're hearing that splattering because some of the juices are, from this roast are going down here, as well as the cream of mushroom soup. And I've got some sage, rub sage. Again, just about a teaspoon. You just rub, put it on. And you don't have to do this in any particular order. Next thing is marjoram. I'm just going to sprinkle a little on top of this. Marjoram is a, uh, part of the mint family. It's delicious with pork. What's next, Miss Flo? A little bit of nutmeg. Just a few shakes, not a lot. The old nutmeg. And that pairs really well with pork as well. Now we got some garlic. And just a few shakes. And this is the garlic powder. Okay. So then the next thing I'm going to put in here is I have some dried onion soup mix. And I'm just going to sprinkle that on. And like I was saying, it doesn't have to be in any particular order. Sometimes I put this on first, sometimes I do it last. Just get it all in there. Mm -hmm. And I may not use all of this, I'm just going to eye it. As you guys all know, I kind of cook by sight and listening and let see how it goes here. I used about two-thirds of it, and I think that's plenty. Because you don't want this to be overly salty either. And then the next thing is I'm going to put a little bit of this Yoshida's Gourmet Sauce. This really adds to this flavoring of this roast. It gives it a wonderful umami flavoring. How much is well? Just a light drizzle. Maybe one and a half teaspoons at the most. Okay. Just remember, you can always add, but you can't take away. So you don't want to end up with a huge amount. And the last thing is a bay leaf. You stick that down in there. Smells wonderful. It is smelling good. Yep. Yeah. And I don't know if you can see, but the juices are already starting to... Let me turn this so... That's okay, I can, I can get, get more. In oh yeah, that's The juices better. are starting to run down in there. So the next step is, all you have to do is cover this. And I'm going to put it in the oven for two hours and we'll come back and see what it looks like. Hi. Well, it's been two hours and let's take a look at our roast and see how it's turned out. Oh, look at that. It smells divine. 
Looks good, Miss Glow. Yeah, let's take a look and see if we think it's done enough or if it needs to go in a little longer. Look at that. <clears throat> Pretty this, tender. Pa this particular piece um, has no bone in it. I saved the portion that had the bone because I'll probably use that for soup or something like that. But I'm thinking I need to let this go a little bit longer. So I'm going to put it in probably for an additional um, half hour, 45 minutes. I like it when the roast is you know about ready to fall apart. So I'll be back with you in a little while. Take a little look at it here. Okay, we'll be back later. Hi, well, we just took the roast out of the oven again, and I'm going to lift this lid. And remember, always lift your lid away from you. Oh, yeah, look at that. Looking good, Miss Glow. Now, after we stopped the video the last time before we put it back in the oven, what I did do is I spooned some of that, uh, those drippings over the roast, and I added about a cup of water to the bottom. And let's see what it looks like. Oh, yeah. Look at this, you guys. Fork tender. That's pretty tender. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this, and hopefully it'll stay in one piece while I'm removing you better use, it. Yeah, better use something with your left mm -hmm. hand there. There we go. This is going to cool for a good 20 minutes or so. And in the meantime, I'll work on this gravy, and I'll be back with you, and we'll take a, a test of it. I did want to show you guys, there is like on the very top of this, uh, these drippings is grease. So I, you can see it there. I'm going to put that in this, I always save little jars that I can use for grease like this. And then it's easier to just, you know, get rid of. So I'm going to go ahead. I just wanted to show you that. All you do is you take the, your ladle and barely skim the top and it'll come out. And anyway, after that, I'll be adding cornstarch to this to thicken it up. So, and I'll be back to show you that. Well, I removed quite a bit of the grease off of the top. And now what I did is I did two tablespoons of, no, actually more like two and a half teaspoons of cornstarch and then the equal amount of um, water. And I mixed it up really well. Now I'm going to drizzle that in here and stir at the same time so we don't get lumps or anything. There we go. You see how that thickens up? Yes, it sure is thickening up yep. in this glow. So I'm going to continue to stir here. And um, if I cook mashed potatoes with dinner, you know, for something like this, I would use the reserved potato water. I would reserve that when I drain the potatoes to make my gravy. But I am, we're having white rice tonight to go along with the gravy and the roast and the sweet potatoes. So um, because of that, we're going to add some water to this. Or you could add milk, either one. But tonight we're just going to add plain water. So just add it. And you stir it to combine to the right consistency that you want. I put two cups of water in here in this uh, measuring cup, and we'll just see how much we end up using. That oh, smells really good. Yes, it does. You want to get all of those brown bits in this pan off too because that is your friend. It's a lot of flavor. It's called fond. But let's see. How's that coming? We're getting it, aren't we? It's coming off. go so we're gonna let this continue to cook and uh, we'll see how much of this water we need to use in the end hi well I got the gravy all done I put in one cup of water see how nice that looks one thing to always remember when you're cooking with a bay leaf please remember to remove it because people don't need to be eating that it adds great flavor and seasoning but it's not something to, it's edible. Uh, that would not go down good. No, it would actually probably get stuck. 
So anyway, now it's time to slice our roast. I just thought I'd show you how tender that is. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Looks good. Oh, look how nice. Look at the gelatinous in there. Too. Oh, yeah. Oh, excuse me. So I'm going to go ahead and make up a plate, and I'll sample this for you guys, and I'll be back in a bit. Well, now it's the time to taste. And Lucy is looking forward to this, too, I know. If you could hear her talking there. So anyway, oh, you guys, this smells so good. Let me see that plate. So good. Well. Looks good. Well, the gravy on it and everything. It smells good. It melts in your mouth. Not in your hand. <laughs> oh, it's just so good. I haven't, we haven't made this in a few months, and it is just delicious. Mmm. You guys, the herbs that are in this, along with the roast, the roast is just so tender. And the key to that is to sear it and then roast it low and slow with it covered. And let me taste another one of these. That's the roasted butternut squash. And there's a uh, recipe that we'll link to for that as well. This is white rice with the gravy. And, oh, I wish you guys were here for dinner. We would have so much fun. And um, I know you would enjoy it. Talk to you later. And if you like this, please like and subscribe to our channel. We would really appreciate it. And give me a comment. Bye.